things like this are possible. You can do something so crazy that the media didn't even believe us. They thought this was a fake event that because they said, nobody's ever done this before. We're like, exactly. Our dream for Secret Family Reunion is that this kicks off something for the world to see. This business is not about us, it's about us as humans. At conferences, you go and you sit in a room for days and you listen to somebody else speak and it's, you kind of get lost in that. We were at this event and at 2016, we're sitting around talking and dreaming about what events could be. There's so much power in the attendees in the room that we said, let's create something that's all about the attendees because as tech changes in the world, the craving for human connection will never go away. So as far as a scalable human model, it's something that is evergreen. It's, it will be around in 200 years. With 15 billion people on the planet, what's more scalable than humans? Hey! <laughs> After every Hot Dokimazu event, people come up to us and tell us, this was amazing. It was like group therapy, and I feel like I have a whole new family. So after a few of those, we said, you know what every family needs? A family reunion. And Nicole said, you know what's even more fun? A secret trip that no one knows where they're going to. The whole idea of keeping this entire location for a secret for a for year <laughs> is just, I can't even tell you. How do you convince people, this is really happening. I promise, what do I have to show you? And so the people that have attended are absolutely the first to be like, what? Yes, I want to sign up. They get the spirit of spontaneity 100%. So the experience that we wanted to create in the plane was just to reimagine the art of getting there. We literally have been riding on planes for the past year, interviewing flight attendants, pilots. What's the craziest thing you've ever done on a plane? What games will the FAA not let you play anymore that we yes. can play on ours? Yes, and we have them all. And so this is going to be, it's Hot Force One. Welcome <laughs> to Hot Force One, our 737-500 chartered plane experience. If you're unfamiliar with the workings of a seatbelt, please take this opportunity to exit the plane. The tower on the left side used to be the customer's place, so the ship they arrived from the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't know where we were going, first yeah, of all. Right. It's like <laughs> different, unique, try something different. I mean, you always got to do something different. Um, I don't know how much you can see behind me, but we're in Tuscany. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm like blown away by everything and kind of thwarted by nothing. Like, but we're in Italy. You know, like, you know, we're, we're having this experience. It's amazing. I love that concept of something that is a gift you're unwrapping and you don't really know what's inside. That's what this whole experience was. You know, we're all type A personalities for the most part and we want to control every minute of every moment of every day. And we're letting that all go to come to a place we didn't know about. <laughs> and, you know, just bring your passport, pack a suitcase and we'll figure it out once we get there. This is an event for events people, which is every events person's nightmare to plan because we are the most judgy, critical people, well, I would have done it this way, well, I would have done it that way. Out of the gate, they said, look, we're trying everything for the first time, so things are going to break, things are going to fail, be prepared. But we all get to learn about the process together. The event attendees almost judge the industry event because they're looking for things to work, but they're not looking for things to fail. We came out of the gate saying, we're the playground. We're the place where things can fail. Oh yeah, we're hotties. We're hotties. We but that's H-O-T-I-E. <laughs> we just can't pronounce it. Yeah. We're especially without a drink. If we had a drink, maybe yeah, we're actually, all right. Right. I'm just saying. So Hot Dokimazo is a way of meeting, sharing, and learning. It's a verb, it's an action, and that's kind of the movement that's built around this. An offshoot of that is the spontaneous think tank business. And so that is something that we can go into events, into businesses. What we need to do today is determine what our sessions will be for the rest of the agenda. 
These sessions come from you. So the way that we build our sessions is through a process we call crowdsourcing. This has been around since the 80s as part of the unconference methodology, but the way that we do it focuses on problems and solutions. So we spend 30 to 45 minutes with this crowdsourcing process of these sticky notes and Sharpie markers of people writing their problems, their solutions, their areas of expertise, their offers, their needs. We put them all over the walls, we read them out. It's this chaotic, fun, insane process. We then send them off to do an activity while we start creating the patterns and grouping things together. Everyone jumped in and, and put post-it post notes up and the post-it notes became, um, became what's possible. And then, and then it got curated into uh, a three-day um, immersive experience. So the way that this organically flows from nothing to something to brilliance, organically thinking and being, that's not normal. And that's something that I want to be a part of. Are you ready? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, I, in each part of Italy, have uh, one million of residents. The fact that this is a family-run vineyard destination from farm to table, that whole element, everything that we've eaten, drank, they they essentially grow and produce here. Just the family camaraderie and atmosphere is contagious and magnetic, and um, it really just kind of bled into everything that we did. I think, you know, the secret family reunion, more of a family reunion, this is the most eclectic group of people I've ever been around, but also the closest group of people that anyone will take you in. And you are family and you cultivate conversations and have these real life experiences. And it's kind of like the late night at work when you're thinking and laughing and then these creative things come from like play and conversation and um, you kind of solve problems without realizing um, that they were even there before. I think to be real life somewhere and watching, hey, you know, like we've seen the sun come out and there be rain. Every moment is a different experience of the environment. And relationally, that's been true as well. Like every time you sit down for a meal, every session, the discussions are opening up new possibilities if you're willing to listen and respond. And I think that's something I'm gonna take away is this isn't just how you do events. This is how you should do life. I would say the spontaneous think tank is the session where people are having the conversations, but it wasn't pre-planned. It came from the crowdsourcing opportunity that they had to determine the problems and solutions that existed in the room. We also have in the agenda three strategy sessions for Swag Hub. The whole idea of experiencing an unconference where I get to set the agenda and uh, I'm surrounded by peers uh, and people from different parts of the events industry uh, was really attractive to me because it gave me the chance to get lots of different perspectives and, and get the questions I wanted answered answered. They had to be creative and inclusive and be really inventive with what they were doing. And so I loved the surprise element and I also really enjoy the diversity of attendees that were able to come out. The, I mean the conference itself and what they put together is totally different from anything that, that I've ever seen in the industry which is really good. It, this is the most immersive, intensive attendee experience I've ever had. Uh, people have been very welcoming as well so if you walk into a room and step into a group they immediately welcome you into the conversation. If you don't choose to show up and pursue there's not going to be community and com camaraderie but everyone here is in the same boat and I think we all want that. We came here for that and so it's actually been easy to talk to people and it's been supportive and yet there are people here who do incredible things. It evolved from just being event industry people to being more business professionals, marketing professionals, because the conversations are all about ROI, relevance, engagement, and they blend together as an omnichannel marketing conversation. In a world of content consumption, we want people to understand that co-creating is more meaningful and impactful and should happen more often. There is a magic that HD has that no other events have been able to capture, but it's, it's structured, it's intentional, and it allows people to be humans in a way that other events don't make room for. I think like an onion, right? The, you peel an onion and you get to know it to the soft core center. That's how this whole event has unfolded.
Like they have created this onion that, that everyone, everyone can immediately start peeling and then eventually we have all gotten to the soft core center. And now I feel like I just wanna walk around and hug people, that's not me. It's not like an industry conference where we're talking about what clients want, it's about what we want and how we can all work together to serve better so it's much more collaborative. An attendee's responsibility when you come here is the willingness to be vulnerable, know you're in a safe space, and know that your business isn't going to be jeopardized. I think an event like this is so valuable just because it gives you great ideas to share with your customers, your clients, your fellow co-workers. Uh, it really makes you think differently about um, the meetings and events industry and how we communicate and how we share experiences and build human connections. It's incredibly diverse. So many different people, so many different backgrounds, and I love that. I love that diversity and just the interesting people that I've met. I think it's all about the relationships that I've formed here, um, the people that I've met, and I could see a long-term future of connections and networking and friendships that I think are the best ways to do business. I've been getting a lot of, you know, a lot of advice, a lot of insight, a lot of just, um, I've just been kind of trying to act as a sponge and soak up as much information and knowledge as I can from, I mean, all these people I aspire to be like, so. You, you bring back experiences. It's like you tell somebody about this and what you've learned or what you saw or what's different. The fact that we're in a venue that's not an event venue is perfect. And the fact that along the way there's been bumps and bruises and things we didn't expect has only enriched the experience because in the end, it brought us closer together. I think there's a lot of authenticity here that gets lost in big corporate events and one of my goals is to infuse authenticity back into those experiences because often the executive audience who we want to attract, they're burned out on the traditional conference and they just won't go. And I think for me, having had this experience and really, really understanding the type of connection it creates and the types of conversations that you have, that, that changes the game.